today we're making hot cocoa mugs for our Christmas in July series. So if you missed the first video, I'm gonna put that up above for you, but today we are making the most adorable hot cocoa mugs with our Cricut and with vinyl. So I own a Cricut mug press and I also own a PYD Life tumbler press, which you know you can do mugs on, but today, today we're going old school and we're going to use vinyl. I'm going to talk to you about what kind of vinyl you need to use on these and what kind of designs you need to pick when you're working with vinyl on a mug. So I hope that you will stick around with me to the end and see how these cuties turn out. So let's go ahead and pop into it. By the way, if you're new here, you're crafting with Kim Byers. Let's go. Okay, so here we are on the craft table and these are the things that I'm going to use. Do not feel overwhelmed. I'm showing you more than you actually need because I wanted to show you different colors and things like that. What you have to have is a Cricut Joy, Cricut Maker, Cricut Explore. You need your mug and these I got from Hobby Lobby. Look how stinking cute these are. I love them. I think I paid two dollars and a quarter or so for each one of them. And then you also need your vinyl and transfer tape. So this is the smart vinyl for the Cricut Joy. The most important thing you're going to see right here is this word right here, permanent. Okay, so you don't have to use smart vinyl. It can be regular, you know, like regular vinyl that you put on a mat, but the word permanent needs to be there if you're putting this onto a mug because you want it to survive your hand washing and you want it to survive your dishwasher. I know there's a lot of talk about whether or not that will work, but I'm here to tell you that I use permanent on my mugs and I wash them in the dishwasher if, if the design is chunky, if it's really thin, I just hand wash it. And then we need a green mat. I have a brayer or you could use a scraping tool. I do use a fabric tape measure when I'm doing anything curved. And then I also have my paper trimmer, which is what I use to cut out everything um, just to save material. I use it so that I save as much material as possible. So I have these colors and I wanted to use these two pinks. I'm actually going to cut them out and place them onto a green mat since I don't have them in the Smart Vinyl for my joy. And then I also have this, which is a new toy. And I'm excited about it, but I'm gonna show it to you in a few minutes when we get back from a Cricut Design Space. So let's pop in and look at the designs. Actually, before we pop in, super important, take your mug, this, okay. So let me go ahead and tell you what this. This is a stand for anything round so it doesn't roll away from you while you're crafting. It's new from PYD Life and I just got it a couple of days ago. It's actually adjustable so whether or not it's um, a big or you know like a skinny something or a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, all the way to like the really big tumblers, you're going to be able to use this for all of them. Isn't that great? I'm really excited about this. Okay, so let's lock that in and put our mug on that. And so what we're going to do is we need to measure this. We need to know what space we have to work with before we hop into Cricut Design Space. So I'm going to say three and a half by two and three quarters. So let's go ahead and let me show you what we've got. Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space and these are the designs that we're going to work with today. We are actually going to do fresh snow and hot cocoa and it's cuddle weather. But I wanted to show you, these are some other things that are available in Cricut Design Space. I thought all of these were cute, although I do steer away from designs that get too, like, too much going on when I'm working on a mug. So unless I'm going to use sublimation, and we're not using sublimation today, right? So we're using vinyl. So I went with this simple, and what I do always is I go into shapes and I bring in a shape that is similar to whatever I'm making. And so for instance, in this case, we're doing mugs. So I just grabbed a rectangle, and then what you want to do is measure your cup and then you'll go up and unlock it and change this to the width and height approximately of the area that you're going to be putting vinyl on. I find that this really helps me to make sure that I get good proportion. And so I'm going to go ahead and th these are adorable. I love this color palette and since my mugs have these colors in them, I thought let's go with pink. So I'm going to turn these off, this hot cocoa and the hot cocoa flannel and the socks and the fuzzy socks, although I think those are adorable. I'm gonna turn those off and we're going to take this over to the mat. I'm also going to turn off these squares that I created because these are just templates for me to be able to look and see how this is all gonna work out. So we're going to go ahead and cut those off as well or hide those as well. And now we are ready to go up and choose a machine. I'm going to be using my Cricut Joy today, but you could cut these obviously on your Explorer or on your Maker. And so let's go ahead and hit Make It. And today I'm going to be using the mat. So let's select on the mat and I am going to be using the smaller of the two. So let's hit confirm. 
And so now we have two mats. Now the thing about vinyl is that we are going to use transfer tape to move it onto our mug. So we do not need to mirror these. So we are going to leave them just as they are and so we can get a good measurement. So we need basically two and a half by three of the dark and we need three and a half by three or just four by three of the light. Okay, and we're ready to go ahead and hit continue. So I'm going to select all material. We're going to go down to vinyl. And when we look through all the vinyls, we are going to choose smart vinyl permanent. Okay, let's go back to the craft table. Okay, so let's start with its cuddle weather and we need four by three and a half for this one. So let's go ahead and pop that into our paper trimmer. And again, I love using this because I do not like wasting material. Okay, so this is four inches, although we do have the extension arm if we needed it. Okay, but we don't because we just need four inches. So we need four by three. So let's make sure we have that all lined up. And you can't probably see it on camera, but this is the three mark. So I'm just going to bring my edge here. And now, there we go. Okay, so now I can just take a pair of scissors and trim that out and I haven't wasted any material and I love that. And if I do need to make, you know, another um, project feeding this into my machine, I would just come over and trim it all the way across. It's no big deal. Okay, so now that we have this, let's go ahead and put that onto our mat. I just realized this is a brand new mat, guys, so I need to take my liner off. So we'll place that down. And then I like to use a brayer, but you could also use a scraping tool and get that in place. And now we're ready to go. Just feed it in. Okay, and so there we go. Perfect cut, look great. Okay, so we're going to bend our mat and not our material. We'll take that off and we're going to set that aside and go ahead and cut out our other material. Okay, and so the second cut is done. Let's see if we can get, there we go. Fresh snow and hot cocoa. These are gonna be so cute. So again, we're going to bend and just pop that right off. And then I'll put my cover back on my mat. We wanna keep it as tacky as possible. And let's weed these. Okay, so now that our design is weeded out, the very next thing we wanna do is we want to clean our mug. So I just have alcohol in this tiny little spray bottle and I will link this up below if you guys wanna check this out. They're only a couple dollars on Amazon, but I usually use a microfiber cloth and I can't find, I don't know what I did with it here on the craft table. So we're gonna spray this and then we're just going to clean our mug and make sure that there's no film and there's nothing, you know, dust and that kind of thing um, on it before we put our design on. Okay, and so we're going to allow that to dry for just a second and we are going to take transfer tape and we are going to pick up our first design and get that onto our mug. Okay, so we'll start with, let's start with the cuddle weather. It's cuddle weather, I'm ready for this. Okay, so we take our transfer tape, we peel that away, leaving the backer on. We're gonna start at one corner, one edge, and place our transfer tape down. It's going to want to kind of like suck down to the design, so just be careful. And you can take your brayer and start working it across and work it right off of the backer. Okay, so now what we're going to do is peel from the edge we're gonna pick up our design. Ta-da, super easy. And now we want to make sure that we're getting it. Now, the orientation of your mug, I like to be able to see my design. Some people like it to be on the opposite side facing you know, whoever they're having coffee with. You could put it on both sides, which is you know probably the best method, but I do like to have mine facing me. So here we go. We're going to center that in our design, keeping in mind, one of the things I like about this, this little foam um, stand, is that it's going to keep my handle straight out. So if I just had this on a towel or something like that, my mug could, you know, kind of roll. And so then I wouldn't have this centered. So this is nice because this foam grips the mug. So I will put this down in the description for you guys, but we want to have our handle out and center our design starting in the middle. We want to make sure that our middle touches first. Okay. And so then we'll take our 
sprayer. And because this is locked, this little stand is locked, we're going to be able to push down. Take our brayer, whoop, take our brayer or our scraping tool and make sure that we get in between all the little crooks and crannies. Okay, and then once you're good with this, you're going to be able to peel from an angle. Okay, and there you go. And I don't think I mentioned this before, but this is a strong grip transfer tape, and that's what you're going to want to use when you're working with permanent vinyl. That's so cute, turned out great. But you can, if you're, you know, if you have any bubbles or anything, just work those out with your brayer. Okay, and so I think that one turned out beautifully. So now let's go ahead and do our second one. And you know, a lot of times I will use the um, same transfer tape to do more than one project. So I'm not a firm believer in just throwing it away after one use, but let's make sure that we clean our surface. So we'll just clean that one up. Okay. So now that we can take our on and just slowly peel that up. Now we want to make sure that our handle is the right direction. We're going to lay our design down, centering it the best that we can, starting in the middle, kind of like a taco. Go. We'll put that down, use our brayer. And the nice thing about the stand, again, you can push down as hard as you want. Okay, beautiful. And most important tips, guys, don't be in a rush. Do not be in a rush. And if you wanna save that transfer tape, let's put it back on the shiny side. But the most important thing, take your time, don't be in a rush, and then you get these beautiful projects like this and this. I'm not sure which one I love more. Super cute. If you guys love this video, I hope you will stick around and check out some of my other Christmas videos, and there is more Christmas in July to come.